doing it. You got you supposed to be happy you sitting there with Kid L. Why you mad? Okay. The Kid L podcast. Rocking and rolling. We have self made cash in the building. What's going on, bro? How you been? Kid. Oh, uh, guys, by the way, uh, no background noise if possible, please. Um, you want to set that over? No, no, we can keep going from here, man, because he already started it off yeah, with the yeah, joint. Yeah, We're already yeah, rocking yeah. and rolling. We hey, got this. Grab a phone, too, when you do. Um, listen to me, man. You, uh, you've you accomplished a lot in man. the music industry. You, you've you done a lot of great things, man. Um, people have been missing you. You know, I just talked to you before this. You said, you know, you're in a different state right now, but talk about... What's going on, man? What's been happening? Why have you been a little bit more uh, laying back on the music and stuff like that? Before we start, this episode is being sponsored by (sighs) iFix Detroit. If anything goes wrong with your phone, and I mean anything, whether it cracks, breaks, or you need something replaced, go to iFix Detroit. They are a phone repair store. They also offer prepaid services. Not only do they offer repairs, but they are a fully equipped electronic store. They offer prepaid plans and they are a bill payment center. You can get to iFix Detroit Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. They're located at 16401 East Warren Avenue, Detroit, Michigan. iFix Detroit for all your phone repair services and more. This episode is also being sponsored by 24-7 Mobile Tire Shop. The 24-7 Mobile Tire Shop offers a few services, which includes wheel repair, auto repair, and they can also change out your wheels for new or used wheels. If you get stranded on the side of the road, they can come help you and get you a new pair of wheels. But if you also just are looking for some new wheels, they can help you with that as well. Go check out my boys, 24-7 Mobile Tire Shop. Man, like, you want to know what's so crazy, though, because... The shit I went through, bro, like, I don't even feel like uh, anybody, I don't feel like anybody would have made it. Even if they made it out of that situation, I don't feel like they would have still continued anything else they was doing. You know what I'm saying? Especially with um, me with scam rap and, you know, shout out my boy Lando. He said scam rap was dead. Scam rap ain't dead, bro. I'm about to make scamming great again. (laughs) But look, um, with scam rap, bro, like, you know, like, with that whole aura that I had about myself, bro, motherfucker would have just stopped. You get what I'm saying? From that situation after what happened to me, like, bro, it would be like, bro, I'm done. You feel me? So I really had to, bro. I'm be, I'm, I'm be as transparent as I can. I really had to learn how to walk again. Like, you talking about, you talking about crawl before you walk. Like, like I know how that feel for real. Like. I'm a grown man feeling almost like a child again, bro, having to crawl at certain times, you know, because, bro, I was depressed. You feel me? Like, shit was crazy, bro. Like, bro, shit was crazy, bro, for me in, you know, this situation that I went through. But, um, yeah, that was the main reason why, you know, I was gone, bro. Like, I had to I had to get my life um, mentally, bro. I think it was a mental standpoint for me. Um because I felt like shit was over with, bro. No lie. Yeah, man. So mentally, it was just like, I got to get my mind right, bro. And I went through that shit for almost three years, bro. Like mentally, every day just in my head. You get what I'm saying? Like every day in my head. And you know what's so crazy? Everybody embraced my situation, bro. But I'm in my head. This me, bro. You feel me? Never expecting I was going to go through this shit. I'm in my head every day. Like, bro, ain't nobody going, you feel me, rock with Goldie no more. You get what I'm saying? Just be, That's how I felt. Mm. Like, ain't nobody even, t- like, of course my family accepted me. My mom, you feel me, my brother, my woman who was that was there for me. Everybody, you know, accepted me. Her family accepted me. All that was cool. You get what I'm saying? But I'm looking at the outside world. Like, bro, ain't nobody going to accept me, bro. Nah. And I'm like, I'm over with. You get what I'm saying? And... I don't know, bro. Like, if if it was meant for me to quit, bro, I would have quit. Real talk. Yeah. If it was meant for me to quit, bro, I could use every excuse in the book and be like, bro, it's a rap for me, gang. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm double amputated. I don't got to do nothing. I could sit and soak. If you ain't around me feeling sorry for me, don't be around me. You get what I'm saying? I could have I could, I could, I did that, bro. 
But no, nah, bro, it's it's bigger. You feel me? And I was just telling I was just telling my brother, bro, before I came in here, I was like, bro, if anything somebody could pick up from me, I don't want them to pick up the negative shit like me smoking or, you know, um, my past background from, you know, scamming or whatever the case may be. I don't want them to pick up that. Just pick up the resilience, bro. You feel me? Pick up me not giving up, gang. You fit, bro. I could have gave up. I still dropped the tape, twenty four tracks on that bitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like life after indictments for real. Like got indicted, bro. Like the woman who was just you feel me rubbing the shit on my head, bro. She was pregnant with both of my kids, bro. Mm. We lost both of them mm. during that whole process. So twenty nineteen, I just got it tatted. I got a, I, got, I just got it tatted, bro. Five eighteen nineteen. That was when my first child died, bro. Mm. I had just got indicted. I'm going through pre-trial. I'm going through pre-trial. She pull up, you feel me? She at my Bob crib. I'm at my Bob crib. Tether on, you know, I'm at my mom's shit. And uh she pull up, everything cool. She pop up unexpected. And um, you know, everything's going good. We chilling. And it's just I wake up, you know, like she telling me, hey, wake up, woo woo. It's the first child, you know, the first child. She like, wake up. I come in the bathroom. Bro, like, this even before I lost my legs, bro. I'm, I had just got indicted. You feel me? So I come in the bathroom. My sh I see my shorty head damn near. You feel me? I'm like, she go to the hospital. I'm thinking everything straight, bro. You feel me? I'm on I'm on tether. I had to call. Let's she left the house before me. I couldn't even leave with her, bro. When it happened, I'm on tether. I gotta call my PO at five in the morning. You feel me? Like my my one like you feel me? I gotta I gotta you know get some clarification before I can even leave the crib, bro. So I'm late mm. even getting there to even finding out what's going on, bro. Yeah. You know, and I'm on papers. Can't do shit. I'm on tether. No, I'm not on papers. I'm on tether. My fault. And um, you know, tragic. I lose my first one. I lose my first shorty, bro. On pretrial, not knowing what's about to go on with my life or nothing, bro. <clears throat> on federal pretrial, not knowing if I'm about to, you feel me? I don't know what's about to happen, bro. I ain't never went through fucking nigga federal pretrial and did city court. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. 36th district. You know. I ain't never went to Frank Murphy, 36th District. I ain't even never seen Frank Murphy. I seen 36th District Federal Building. Like nigga went from motherfucking elementary to college, motherfucker, and crying. Wow. Like real talk. But bro, so that was my first child though. Lost my first shorty, bro. I'm sick. You know, me and her, we kicking it. We like, we about to try again. Because I'm going to be real with you, bro. I'm like, if I'm about to get locked up, I need to have a shorty. You get what I'm saying? I'll keep it real with you. I get locked up, but for whatever they about to try to, ooh, whoop, I need to have a shorty. So we try again. You know, we get it going. You know, boop. So towards in the ending of me about to get sentenced, sentence, boom, she get pregnant again, right? You know, so she pregnant again. We going through that phase. You know, I'm about to get sentenced. I'm thinking I'm finna get locked up. I dropped uh, the United States versus self-made cash because I thought I was finna get locked up. That tape was already, that tape already out. That was before Life After Indictments. Mm. But I dropped that tape and I'm like, I'm finna get locked up, nigga. That shit was already in my head. But Brian gonna cap. I think, you know, um... By the grace of God, bro, just me going in that motherfucker, bro, being honest what they had, I took it to the chin, you feel me? And by the grace of God, bro, the judge gave me some mercy, you feel me? She gave me three years of federal probation. So if I'm taking that, hell yeah, I beat that shit. Nigga, hell yeah, I beat it. You feel me? If I went in that bitch and, and kept it real, nigga, she made the decision. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So, hell yeah, I did. Because I didn't have to spend no life in... I mean, I ain't have to spend no time in that bitch. You feel me? I'm going to go a little bit deeper with you soon. Like, when I got into my accident, though. Hmm. Like, when that shit happened. But, boom. So, uh, 
She gave me three years, bro. So in my motherfucking, in my plea, it was, you know, in it for me to move to Ohio. That was one of the, you know, stipulations that I wanted if I'm going to plea, mm. you know. So with my lawyer, we like, all right, if I'm moved to Ohio, I got a woman down there, I got a family, this is where I want to go start my life at. You get what I'm saying? Like, that was the mindset. You know, she already pregnant again with the second child. We about to do this shit. This is what it is. And so they grant that. You know, it's cool. You know, judge, like, all right, you can move to Ohio. This is January 2020. And that's what it all happened. January 2020, I go to court. January 4th, she like, yeah, three years, federal probation. I'm like, cool. Just shoot me to the O. <laughs> like, I'm, I already know what, I'm already knowing what's going on with me. I already know how everything looking. You feel me? No matter what nobody's saying, I know. Bro, shoot me to the O. You feel me? And then I shot, I shot, come back. I shot a video, come back. One car shit have come back. I was never gone. Boom, I shot that. Everything was good, bro. And then April 4th, that's when my accident happened. You know, April 4th, she pregnant with my shorty. You know, wait, 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 let me take you just a little tiny bit back. Mm. Just a little tiny bit. She was in the hospital. You feel me? Because my shorty was coming early. You know what I'm saying? He was coming early. Second time, another boy. I can only have boys, too, but, yeah. Uh, second time, bro. I'm like, let's get it. Take me to the old family. Let's go. And she in the hospital. I get into my accident, bro. You feel me? She already in the hospital. So she had my shorty, right? But my shorty got to stay in there. She had him a couple months before his due date. So, so if I'm, I don't really know the details, but I'm trying to be <clears throat> as transparent as possible on this situation. You get what I'm saying? Because I can't, you know, really tell her side of, you get what I'm saying? But boom, from, from my standpoint, all right, she already had a shorty. He got to be in there until uh, his original due date. You know, I don't really know all the details about that, you know, but all right, cool. You know, she had him. He healthy. This better than the last situation. You get what I'm saying? He here. You know, cool. I get into my accident, bro. Bro. I, I, I smile about it right now because of how I feel about it. But, bro, I get into my accident. My nigga. I had a Dodge Challenger at the time. All black. I had just got it, bro. You feel me? Just got it, bro. Had my, man, like, I was feeling good, bro. Like, I just got, you feel me? I'm feeling like, bro, not feeling like, yes, bro, I did. I, I beat my case, nigga. You feel me? Me getting three years federal probation, that's a walk in the park for me. Because be, cause real talk, I, I did that three years, bro. I didn't violate not one time. So my mind, like, no matter how I carry myself or whatever, but my mind was already set that I'm about to walk this three years down. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm not about to get locked up. Nothing to talk about. I'm not getting locked up, bro. I'm about to do what I got to do. On Follow the guidelines. Boom. January, bro. February, March. You feel me? Like I said, I shot the video, come back. April, I get into my accident. But I remember walking to my car, and I remember crawling out that bitch, bro. I'm telling you facts, bro. I remember getting in it, and the last thing I remember was crawling out that bitch. Let me tell you where I was at. I was on I was on 8 Mile and Van Dyke. I made it all the way to 8 Mile and Dequinder, bro. If anybody from Detroit, you feel me, they know motherfucking... Eight Mile and Van Dyke all the way down to the to Quinder, bro. I didn't hit nobody. I'm telling you, God can strike me down right here, bro, through this motherfucking thing if I'm lying, bro. I didn't hit nobody, bro. I didn't injure nobody, bro. I was the only one that, that was injured, bro. I was unconscious for 45 minutes. Mm. Before I came to 
you feel me, some recollection. You know what I'm saying? So I crawl out of that bitch. Bro, I crawl out of that bitch, bro. I look down. My nigga, I look down. My shoe off, you feel me? I see that bitch. I look at my tire, nigga. That bitch just rolling. I don't even know what's wrong with my shit, wrong with my shit. Like, I'm just so out of there, but nigga like, bro, is you good? Is you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm telling this man, like, I'm good. You feel me? Ambulance come. You know, this whole situation happened. I'm in the hospital. Now, I just remember being in the hospital. I remember them cutting my clothes off. Mm. And all right, boom. I remember waking up that morning. Doctors all around the room. Bro, and it's so crazy. My heart being fast as fuck. Mm. Doctors all around me, bro. This nigga said, my fault. I can't even call him that, bro. This man that saved my life, bro. You feel me? He told me we had to amputate your leg. Bro, I didn't even know what that shit meant, bro. <laughs> this man told me they had to amputate my leg. I didn't even know what amputated mean. Being so dumbfounded in the world, not even knowing. I didn't probably I didn't seen people amputated before. Didn't even know it was called amputated. Amputee. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And he was like, that ain't even the worst part. He like, and we gotta cut off the next one in two days. So for me, you know, coming into realization, it was like, bro, he like, yeah, you was unconscious for 45 minutes. So I'm upside down burning, bro. Just burning, bro. Just burning, bro. God ain't want me to be here, bro. I would have burnt, gang. I would have burnt in that motherfucker, bro. You feel me? Ain't nobody, bro. Listen, ambulance started to come when people started to gather around. If I'm unconscious for 45 minutes burning, bro, wasn't nobody coming there, bro? Bro, listen, I didn't get into no accident. And I didn't break my legs, bro. Like, I was literally under that nigga in that bitch burning, gang. Like, real shit. So, <clears throat> all right, I get amputated. Nigga, like, you amputated, you got to do your shit next two days. Instantly, bro, I say my life over with, gang. <laughs> he tell me that, I'm like, it's over with for me. I'm like, Goldie. It's Seth make it over with, bro. Life over with. Who gonna accept this? You know what's so crazy? I wish I would've took everybody on this journey, bro. I wish I had enough strength and confidence, bro, to take everybody on the journey soon as it happened. Soon as it happened to me, I wish I was confident enough to be like, bro, this is what happened to me, bro. Because I can sit here right now to you and be transparent and tell you everything that happened, bro. If I had this confidence back then... With just that though, you know, bro, I, I I really feel like I would I I could have helped everybody understand my story more because I went through a lot of shit, bro. You need time though, bro. That was three years, bro. Still, it's a life changing event, bro. It's like serious shit, you know. Especially you saying like you feel like it's over. That's only certain circumstances where you can say it's over. And you felt that way. No, for sure. What was the circumstances of the accident? Like, how did you get stuck or, like, what happened? So, look, so I didn't hit nobody. I didn't crash into nobody. You know, if I'm driving and, and you know, my situation of I think I'll go deeper into that another time. You get what I'm saying? Sure, sure. My situation of why the accident happened. I hit a curb, right, and I flipped on 8 Mile and Dequinder, like the little turnaround. Bro, the Belmont. Y'all know the Belmont, bro? Same one we go to since we was kids, bro. Yeah. The Belmont Shopping Center, bro. Yeah. Right there. Bloop. My car is just, so I hit it. Bro, I don't even know how many miles I was going, bro. No lie. But. If you looking at the accident, it wasn't like it was some, it was like I was probably just on some drifting type shit, you know? 
and drift it off, and that bitch, bloop, and that bitch just, everything just, you know, and boom. So that was the cause of, and then I'm unconscious, you feel me, the whole time. I don't remember, you know. I feel like I could be more transparent with it now after just thinking about, like, damn, bro, how did you even get yourself into this situation, you know. Doctor telling me you unconscious 45 minutes. That's only how my motherfucking, uh, my limbs burnt off. You get what I'm saying? Like to, and then I really think, I really think I lost my feet and just a little bit, my Achilles and shit, but a lot of shit was burnt. You get what I'm saying, bro? Mm. So they got to take me to fresh flesh to start me with. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was just how that situation was. But, bro, I, like, I feel good as hell because I'm not even missing a lot, bro. And it's like, all right, boom, I'm still here. But when that shit had happened, bro, it was like, it's over. Because I wasn't prepared for that, bro. You know? Like, I, I listen to a lot of shit, bro, and, and, and I feel like us as people, we don't prepare for the worst. Even if you don't, you know, even if you don't go through it. But you still got to prepare for it, though. You know, because when it do happen or if it do happen, you able to be like, all right, this is what I do when this shit happen. I was listening to um, T.D. Jakes. He a motivational speaker. And he was he was doing a motivational speech. And he was like, in the army, what do what do you think they prepare you for? And some guy was like, um, war and, you know, something like that. Everybody was giving practical answers. You know what I'm saying? And no, what they prepare you for is. When your gun jam, or if your homie gets shot in the head, how to carry a dead body. Because you ain't thinking about that. You thinking about killing, shoot, one of my bang, bang. You know what I'm saying? You ain't thinking about if your homie gets shot in the head, how you going to transport his body. Or if your gun jam, what you going to do. You know? So that's what they, they, they prepare you for the worst. They prepare you for the worst thing that's going to happen. So, you know, me hearing that, it's like, all right, I just got to get my mindset there, even if I feel like I'm not going to go through it. You know, like, bro, I walk by faith and faith work. Like, you got to put work behind it. It, it. It's a beautiful blend. If you don't put no work behind it, it ain't going to work. So I walk by faith, bro. So I'm going to still do what I got to do, but I'm still, like, head on the swivel, bro. Like, I'm knowing what's going on, you know? When the accident happened, as far as your psychological state and how you perceived yourself as a human, as a person— what things changed completely for you? At one mo- moment, you know you're, you know you're a rapper, you know you're successful. You're also going through trials and stuff with the law, but in the next moment, real life's hitting physically. It's changing you as a, a physically. It changed your life, obviously. But how did it change you mentally? It changed me mentally because, bro, I, I, was, I, I said this saying to my brother a little while back too. I'll say. Um, I thank God, you know, for for what happened to me, because it changed my mindset, bro. I'm gonna be real with you, bro. If this shit didn't happen to me, bro, I wouldn't be speaking to you like the way I speak. You get what I'm saying? I I really feel like, and I'm still learning that, you know, like how to articulate myself, etc. But like, bro, I feel like back then when I was making music, I feel like I was just doing it, you know. You know, I ain't see my gift. I ain't see my purpose, you know. Like, now I feel like I know my purpose for life. With that accident happening to me, bro, I'm like, okay, I know I got to serve a purpose. Now I'm about legacy. You get what I'm saying, bro? First, I was just doing it on my terms for me. Now I'm like, bro, like shit just really, remember when I just sent you the message? Real shit. Remember, I was like, we would talk about this in the interview, and you laughed at the comment? Yeah. Like, bro, shit really just happened to me, bro. Yeah. You're and I could have been like, you feel me? Like, it's a, like, but I still got to keep moving, bro. That's what changed. Without legs. With legs, I probably would have been weaker mentally. You get what I'm saying? I think because God already knew I was strong, and I ain't knew I was strong. He like, all right, boom, let's go. And I know you still could do it. The process of learning that, you know, you, you lost your legs, um, obviously must have been devastating. What was the beginning phases of overcoming it? Bro, all right, so at first, um, 
I was I was at my brother crib when it first happened. And um like I don't got no legs. <laughs> like, I didn't even have prosthetics at the time. I'm in the wheelchair. You feel me? Everything is new to me. You get me? Like, I'm thinking, I'm, I've been used to standing up in the shower my whole fucking life. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, all right, I got to shower different. Everything is different, bro. You know, like, everything is different. Like, all right, uh, my mom, she was changing my, she was changing my, you know, like, my limbs. And my shit was so fat. Like, bro, my, so, like, now, like, my shit is skinny. Like, you know, it's, like, it's, it's goldy. Nah, it's. Fire? Bitch is fire, nigga. <laughs> and these bitches. But at first, these bitches was fat. See how I got skinny jeans on? Like, now, like, bro, I was wearing baggy-ass pants, bro. Because I didn't even want nobody to, like, see, like, the how fat my limbs was. I used to wear baggy-ass pants, bro. I posted a picture of it. On, like, I, I tried to wear just baggy pants so, like, when nobody recognized, bro. I had sent my brother a picture, like, bro, how my legs look? He like, bitch, look straight, bro. Like, he, he, he wanted me to feel good, but, like, he like, bro, I could still see your shit. I'm like, I ain't even posting the picture. But that shit, bro, man, it was a long time, bro. It was a long time coming for for this, you know, um, mindset that was built. And I feel like that's the only thing... Um, that I want to do for anybody, bro, you know, is just let them know, like, bro, don't give up on what you got going. I don't know what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know, when you're trying to overcome stuff, is there a specific day that you make a conscious decision to say, even though the worst things have happened to me, I'm going to move forward? Or is it kind of like over weeks, over months that you gradually built the idea of moving forward, even though you went through this tragedy. Bro, that shit got to happen right now. Bro, I just told you I went through some shit yesterday, bro. Yes. I went through some shit a couple hours ago, bro. Like, I'm, like, real shit. I could have stopped right there and was like, okay, let me just shut everything down. I'm not come and do the interview with Kid tomorrow. You feel me? I'm not doing nothing, you know? And even my shorty told me, like, yeah, like, like man, like, of course... Everything cool, everything gonna be all right. You know, that's the supportive side, but I still gotta mentally make that decision. You yes. know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm like, bro, I just gotta keep going. I deal with that after I'm done handling the shit that I've already said yes to. You know what I'm saying? Cause now it's like my morals and my standards as a man, bro. When I do have shorties, I want that shit to be so strong that I stand on that, that they understand that, bro, like this is what it is. Mm. So, yeah, if I, like, if I'm going to say yes to this, this is where I got to be at, bro. Do I feel like, do you feel like I do wrong? Because if I scam or whatever, or if I scam, like, that ain't that ain't no karma, though. You get what I'm saying? Scamming? It's just weird. Scamming? I don't know. It's kind of in the same caliber as, like, trickery and kind of decep deception and whatnot. I said because I scammed. <laughs> Just make sure you get make sure you, right. That's a past part of your life, man. That's not the future. But you did say earlier that when you were on the hip hop lab, you talked about how scam rap isn't dead. So does that mean that you're considering like bringing it back but not doing it or something? Bro, it was see see. Look, let me tell you about this. It was never dead, and it was bro. I'm I'm it. You get what I'm saying? I'm it, bro. And this is not even no glorification, bro. Anybody know, bro? That Goaty it. Everybody though, like they know I was the one. That that's the one that made everybody even want to talk about it, bro. When 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 people thought I was locked up, bro, and on some real, bro, I was learning how to walk, bro. Mm. I had to hold somebody hip. You feel me to to get comfortable, you know? Real talk. So I was learning how to walk, bro. But man, like I seen it, bro. Everybody picked up on the wave. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That I created, bro. Everybody hated scam rap, bro. Everybody hated scammers, bro. Everybody like, oh, scam, bro. Fuck all that. I'm like, come on, bro. Then I come and I go. I feel like some took it as an opportunity. Like, shit, you know? Yeah. And I'm be real, bro. I can't get mad at that. You get what I'm saying? I can't get mad at that. You know, but I know I'm solidified, you know, and everybody know that, you know? Everybody knows so with Goldie. For sure. When we talk about scam rap, you know, your name's always mentioned, but obviously, like, to consider yourself as one of the emergers of it, you brought it to the table and made it and amplified it. 
because I feel like mm-hmm. I feel like people probably even if people said a reference of it in a song, you get what I'm saying? Bro, bar for bar. You feel me? Bar for bar telling a story. You get what I'm saying? Like I really feel like I'm different than any other, you feel me? I'm not I'm not trying to make you laugh or you feel me? Like I'm not nigga, this is my life, bro. This is how I eat. You feel me? I'm just gifted enough to be able to tell my story and be able to express it, you know, to the point where it's like shit, you know, like this is what I do. Yes. You know, this is what I did, you know, to the sense where, all right, I could just be transparent, bro, and just uh you know. No, nah. <laughs> it's interesting when we talk about it that, you know, you don't seem like the type of person that's doing it just to do it. You know, it's it's something behind it. Right. That did it just to do it. Mm. Don't do it just to do it. You're talking in present tense. Yeah, it's different times now. Right. Facts. Right. But I don't I don't I haven't experienced the new self-made cash yet, like the new Facts. emergence Facts. of it. Facts. So it's hard to reference anything that you haven't, you know, consumed yet as far as your material, your content yet. Um, now you have been working. You were even just shooting a music video outside of the studio for a second. No, right? facts though. Uh, what's this new material? What's going on? Uh, I was shooting some unreleased shit though. Really, uh, I yeah. was shooting some unreleased shit that I'm gonna drop for the people. But um, life out the indictments. You know, 24 tracks, bro. That I I started recording life out the indictments in 2020, bro. You know, like when. Before I got into my accident, and it went all the way till 2023, you know, and really most of that time, bro, like, yeah, I was learning how to, you know, walk, but I was still writing, like, I was still writing music, I was still um, just preparing myself, like, bro, my darkest times, like, bro, and it's a lot of, like, shit that I really went through, bro, like, a lot of people just be talking, bro, just talking some stupid ass shit that ain't, they ain't doing or that, you feel me, don't make no sense. And I ain't tripping on people that listen to it, bro. But you can't come, you just just understand the lane that I'm in, bro, and, and what I'm doing with my music. You get what I'm saying? Because I am an artist with my music, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm taking what I went through. I'm taking, you feel me, things that transpired in my life. And, you know, I am painting a picture, bro. You feel me? Like, I am painting a picture. I'm not just... And and that's just the difference. And I understand probably a lot of people want to hear some shit like that, but that's why I just stay in my lane, bro. Listen, I'm going to tell you some real shit. If I stay in my lane, it's an easy drive. Woo! That's it, bro. It's, a, it's, 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 it's smooth because it's my lane. I ain't worried about what nobody else doing, bro, you know? It's easy drive, bro. When I get there, I'm going to get there, bro. Yeah. And what is there? The destination. When I get to the destination, I'm gonna get there, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't got a trip. I ain't got a trip on <clears throat> how long it takes. It's an easy, smooth drive, bro. We get there, we get there. Yes. But I'm gonna get there, bro. Yes, man. Um now you had to overcome kind of like the social possible scrutiny. You thought that there was gonna be social scrutiny. You thought that there was gonna be a social, like maybe like a displeasure to seeing or knowing or hearing, or oh, yeah. people oh, were gonna yeah, look at sure. you differently, but they didn't. Right, people welcomed you. People supported you. People are saying like, you know, we're here for you, right? Yeah, on the internet. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they supporting it there. I'm not saying they scrutinize they uh scrutinizing it in person, but if I was in Detroit, bro, it would have been way different. You know, than my experience was with me being in Ohio. You know, um, going through this. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Because I feel like um. Just the people there, bro, they don't give a fuck, you know. You know, I go, I walk in the gas station, short song, you get what I'm saying? Just feeling myself. I think that's what got me to being comfortable with it now. If I was here, and I'm just being real, bro, if I was here, just because how motherfuckers is, I think that's what had my mindset, you feel me? Like, so, like, bro, I would never walk in the motherfucking gas station with shorts. My motherfucker probably be taking pictures of me, you feel me? That's just because I was so stuck off that mindset. You know, moving somewhere else to a different environment, you know, where I'm able, you know, God bless me, bro. You know, like, 
where I'm able to handle shit where I need to handle it. So I'm able to live here. Yeah. You know, I'm able to live here. I got, you know, support here. I can still call my family. So being so recognized in Detroit, uh, the scam rap, but also just a good, great artist, too. Not just a scam rapper, but you're a great artist. Right. For sure. Um, talk about your early, the early parts of your career. Like, when did you enter hip hop? Like, when did you enter the rap scene in Detroit? Bro, I dropped my first uh, tape 2017, bro. Okay, so this is roughly, okay, so this is a good time for Detroit music. Yeah. So you're popping out, you're coming out right at the right time. Yeah, bro. Um, yeah. Were, were you, you were one of the first scam rappers to emerge in Detroit, right? Bro, yes, bro. I really feel, bro, I'm the first, bro. Like I said, it wasn't nobody. Who says swipe music on a song? Who said swipe music? The first one. The first one to call myself Goldie. First one with a credit card chain. That they, they probably got a million of these bits on a fake site selling them and people wearing them. A million people probably got a fake credit card chain or whatever the case may be, but the first one. So, see, I think just with me, bro, I just don't get the 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 notoriety that i deserve you get what i'm saying mm. yeah well it's probably just because of the factor that you disappeared because you you probably would have gotten it facts probably and that's why i say i should have took everybody on the journey with me but it was just like i say bro it's just my mindset bro you know it wouldn't have been a good decision man because spiritually and like for your own conscious health like you can't just get into something traumatic like that and then be like hey i need everybody to have awareness of it because then you yeah. you don't take time to recover yourself internally i always tell people take time for yourself whenever you go through something tragic or anything like that even if you go through a heartbreak no. take time to yourself if you don't recover yourself and you just keep throwing yourself here and there and here and there, you never mentally restable yourself. So I think you did the right thing. But and you you know what's so cool is you're so prominent, like the way you handle yourself and carry yourself that when you do come back, when you do make your comeback, mm -hmm. it's gonna be a bigger boom than if you had stayed consistent through the I'm making years. it now. Yeah, that's what like, I'm saying. I'm, I feel like I'm on you know, I feel like um now I feel like I'm 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 hungry for everything that, that I deserve, you know, that need to come back to me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But I got a different mindset with it. And it's like I'm here, bro. Like, everybody got to accept that, bro. You get what I'm saying? Like, I ain't never went nowhere. Everybody's saying, bro, when I first posted the picture, everybody like, bro, welcome home. Like, I was never locked up, bro. <laughs> like, I was never locked up. But you want to know it's so crazy? What if I did get locked up, though? You feel me? You think I would have lost my legs? Mm. But you think I would have lost my life? Mm. So what are we doing? Yeah. Like, bro, when I say I'm preparing for the worst, I'm thinking about the worst case scenario in the best situation, bro. I don't know if you got, not even you, but I don't know. You feel me? If a, Like I say, I want to emphasize, not even you. But I don't know, no matter where I'm at, I still got that mindset. You get what I'm saying, bro? Like, I don't know what's going to happen. And I didn't used to think like that. And that's why shit happened to me. Anything that happened to me, bro, is because I didn't think how I think now. Yeah. Come on. Nick, you can ask it, man. You were the one who said it. Yeah, Nick. Right. <laughs> I love visuals. Are you uh, above or below the knee amputated? Below. So, I got... Uh, For those who don't know, explain the difference. Please tell them why it's a big deal. All right, so, I'm shout out my amputee people. You know, we showing out. We putting on for us. But look, um, below. Below is I have my knee and I have limb still, you know. So for me, I'm amputated feet, Achilles heel, maybe a little bit more that was burnt, f nice flesh. So I'm good. I got a nice, oh, man. nice ass piece of, you know, limb to just be like, you know, it's here. So God bless me, bro. Like, but like, bro, I could be with it right now. It maybe to anybody else, like, sounds so graphic. But, bro, I thought the same thing. Like, bro, it's gone. But I have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. You get what I'm saying? I have to get comfortable with like understanding that this is my life. That this is what it's got to be. No, okay, we done with that. Now, what you want to be? You're going to sit here and you're going to just, you feel me, go to your grave with your gift? Mm. 
Yeah, I uh, one of my favorite stories is about during the Holocaust. It was a brother and sister outside, and uh, the brother had like been mm. playing around in the streets, and then you know the Gestapo came and picked up the kids and put them on the tr- you know put them on the bus to take mm. them to the ho- to the to the camps. And the sister looked at the brother and realized he had no shoes on. Mm-hmm. And so she grabbed him by the ears. You said, you idiot. We don't know where, go- where we're going, what we're doing. And it's zero degrees outside. You idiot. Mm-hmm. You're causing more trouble for us. When they got to the camps, they separated the brother and the sister. Mm-hmm. And they never saw each other again. And so the sister said, you know, that was the biggest regret of her life. But she, was, she wasn't going to become a victim of the circumstance. She was going to move forward from it and become stronger. Even though it was the worst thing that ever happened to her, mm-hmm. the best thing for her to do was move forward from it even though it was the worst thing you could possibly ever do. And if you don't do that, then for the rest of your life, you're just always feeling like sorry for yourself. You're always feeling depressed. You're always feeling anxious because you're not taking responsibility for your future. You're living in the past. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And And uh, it sounds like that's what you're doing. It's like you're saying it's over. That's done with next. Like for sure. Hell yeah. Like, but I'm going to be real with you. I posted a picture on my page. Um, It was November 7th. When I posted that picture and I told, like, and I posted it on the internet, and I'm like, it was a picture I showed my legs and shit. I'm like, you know, I'm amputated, bro. So, look, I felt the dark-ass cloud, bro. Like, when this doctor told me, like, remember in the beginning when I said, he told me, yeah, I had the amputation leg. It's like a, it's like a dark-ass cloud just came over me, bro, and was, like, heavy, I swear to God on my life, bro, I felt all of that shit release. When I just posted the picture and just told everybody, you know, what was going on, I swear it just felt like a re- I'm not even on no weird shit, bro. It was just like a release just came on me like, bro, okay, like I can finally breathe now. You get what I'm saying? Because it's like I'm not holding this in no more. You know, this was the really like me telling the world, bro, how everybody scrutinized my name and try to, oh, this shit happened to Kaz and try to, you know, like make everything that happened to me. I'm like, bro, if I say this, niggas really gone, you know? And I don't give a fuck, bro. Like, I'm, I really feel like, not even feel, I know I'm way past niggas in so many other areas, bro. I was mentally weak. What's interesting about what you're saying is like, if it had happened to me, I would have just been pissed because I can't like hoop the same no more, and like I can't probably not hit hit it from the back. You the ain't same. see me dribbling? No, I'm just saying like that's what I would have been thinking at the moment. But for you, it was more of like a social circumstance where like yeah, how are pe- yeah, what are people yeah, yeah. gonna think of me more than the actual physical? Yeah, because everything physical physical wise, bro, I could do. So you can hoop just chilling, bro. You ain't see me dribbling though, for real, mm. bro. You gotta follow me, bro. For you real, you don't follow anybody. Right, but see, that's <laughs> look, that's not that's not personal to nobody though. Why'd you do it? Um, it's it's mentally though, you know, because bro, growing up I was a follower. You get what I'm saying? Like, I followed the wrong people. Like, okay, now I know in order to be a great leader, you gotta be a good follower. You know what I'm saying? But the right people. I was following the wrong people. Word. So it just it just always messed me up mentally. You know, so I guess when I started social media, um, it was just like, even when I did was on social media, I used to see shit people was doing, bro. Like, I see people in the clubs and shit, and whatever little four, five hundred I had in my pocket, bro, I go blow that shit. <laughs> I see this nigga in the club going crazy, I want to go do that, you know? And then I got to go home and figure this shit out myself. So that was just something that was like, bro, I don't want to follow nobody and see what nobody doing, bro. What I tell you, if I stay in my lane, it's an easy drive. Yeah. So me following nobody, bro, is like, what 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 everybody follow on the internet, bro? Let's be real. Bullshit. Celebrities, everybody that life they like. You get what I'm saying? If I'm feeling my mindset with that, like, I feel like, okay, I was dumb at a lot of shit, but with that, bro... Because, like I said, I was a follower, bro. So, I'm like, bro, I don't want to see what nobody doing. Because it's going to fuck me up. And whose pages are you searching? Who I want to search? Shit. Yeah, if I follow that? you, I follow Come you. Come on, man. You, you're doing the extra work now, though. You, now you're actually having to type the name every time you want to see what's going on. No, it already be in the recent searches. <laughs> Give me just one person, bro. Cash, though. Oh, okay. I don't That's have a for picture. you. Damn, I don't have a picture. That's for you, That's though. Crazy. I appreciate that. I wanted to see how you was going to react to that shit. Like, oh, so it's not nigga, true? What the fuck you mean, Cash? Down? So it's not true? Thing. 
I can't be jealous anymore, man. I can't be jealous. Well, sports that nobody just like somebody that. No, it's just like I really be on the sport page though. Oh, that's cool. I don't really search people for real. The only other person I know that did that was like Eminem. And I was like, I think I know why though, because if he wasn't following his homies, they'd get mad. So he just doesn't follow anybody. And then it's like, if I follow everybody, be like, follow me, bro. I'm like, bro, if I follow you, then really everybody gonna be like, damn, I really have to follow. So it's like now at a point where it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm really just, you know, like not, but I really don't, bro. Like because if I if I fuck with you and what you doing, bro, I don't have to follow you. You get what I'm saying? That's true. I oh. could see, I could come on your page and see what you own. You get what I'm saying? Now, when you're talking about this. Do you consider this like a reemergence or a reboot to your music career in any sense? Or? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, what's the processes we're taking now? Like as far as putting yourself out here this time coming around, like what changes are going to be made and what kind of music is going to be putting out? It's the music that I'm going to be putting out, bro. Is is me putting my heart on that shit? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I like I say, bro. Like I ain't never want to put music out that was like letting people know what I went through. You get what I'm saying? Even if I went through it in real life, I still wouldn't put it in my music. Because I got so much motion, bro. Like, I don't even got to talk about my pain. You get what I'm saying? I just talk shit in every song. But don't you feel some of the best music comes from that? That's what I'm saying. So me as an artist, like, that's where I'm growing at. God ain't had me go through this to be like, all right, so if you still want this, and this how, you know, like, this how you want to do this thing, and if you want this thing to lead to the next thing you're doing in life, then, you know, this is how you got to do it. So okay. I got to be vulnerable. I got to let you know. I got I got, I got, got the Gucci socks on Man. these bitches. Hold on, I'll show you Nick, you got to show. You gotta show I got the Gucci there. socks on these bitches today. You feel me? We come trim on these bitches. So go get you some. I ain't going to talk shit. Go nah, get that's you, fire. Go get you some Gucci socks for your, for your real feet. I, I these just, bitches feel nah, good. That's okay. fire. I like that. I like that you embrace it, man. That's awesome. It's like you're not like we said earlier. You're not falling like uh, into a depressive state about it. Was there any like when I got, when I had drugs after a surgery one time? They gave me the Vicodin. Mm-hmm. I was I I got so hooked on it that I had no. To, that's why I smoked though. Did you you were on it for a little bit? What did you did you get hooked onto the the prescription? No, 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 no. They oh, was okay. giving me like like nerve you know medicine and shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it was just the phantom pain. For anybody that don't know Phantom, Phantom It's like feeling like It's still there mm-hmm. You know Like now it's just Like this is just Muscle memory now This is like me Being in the gym Putting in work mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying It's like bro I was lazy On a lot of shit I was, I was I was cutting corners On a lot of shit But feeling like Alright I still supposed to be You know Where I felt like I deserve <laughs> With the uh, You know you did Three years of probation, right? You're done with that now. Hell yeah, God is good, bro. It restricted you creatively, I'm sure, to some degree. Like you probably couldn't do as much stuff you wanted to do. I couldn't travel. Your... Yeah, you couldn't leave. Right? I couldn't leave Ohio. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like I was forced. I wasn't forced. I feel like, bro, God put me in a situation. Like, bro, get your mind right. Every time I've been on probation, bro, growing up, I violated. Every single time, bro, listen, I was in middle school smoking weed. No, I was in high school smoking weed, knowing that I'm about to go drop. The bus about to come pick me up, bro, for me to go drop. Yeah. I'm smoking. About to go drop dirty. How stupid is that, bro? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, and you know so crazy? That conscience been there my whole life. When, when, when was I finally, like, you know how I finally come to a motherfucker? It been there, bro. I just been ignoring it. Like, nigga, move, motherfucker. Everybody in my face. Like, bro, you got some... Bro, listen. Listen, bro. This is a fun fact, bro. I got double promoted in elementary school, bro. Smart as fuck, bro. Yeah. Smart as fuck, bro. They call it a social promotion. Like, I know that I got it. Hmm. It's just, I want it. Like I following other shit, not being the leader of myself. You get what I'm saying? I think people who are like super intellectuals and super conscious people also can be the people that fuck up their lives the most because they're so damn aware that it's like, ah, oh, man, I fucking know what it is. Bro, I ain't letting it stop me, though. Yeah. It's like, I know what it is, but it's like, bro, what I want. All right, so look, i am be real, bro. And this is not disrespectful to nobody that's in my life. You get what I'm saying? 
But for what I want, bro, you feel me? I am going to give it 120, bro. Now, if you don't give what you want 120, I may not give you 120 of me. You get what I'm saying? And it's not disrespectful. It's like, okay, I can, like, you going to give me your legs? I'm asking you. Me? Yeah. I'm sorry, G. So how the hell I'm going to give you more than you giving me? Yeah. I can only give you exactly, uh, shit, if you going to give me your shit, take your shit off, take my ass right now, nigga, and I give you everything you give me. But can't do that, bro. Yeah. So it's like I have to be so transparent with my life, bro. I have no time to waste none. But I'm aware. Heightened sense of awareness. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's all it is. But that don't mean I'm I'm not you f attacking whatever life got to bring to me every day, bro. Yeah. That's the way that everybody with a high intellect should handle themselves, but they usually don't because we think we're so damn smart that we think we figured everything out. When you think you figured everything out, that's when substance abuse begins, and that's where you start thinking a little bit too much about life and too much in detail. You kind of give up because you, you feel See, like you know it all. I feel like what you saying, I was that back then. Word. Bro, like right now, I got a good relationship with my dad, bro. You know, we didn't, we never had that because I felt like I knew it all. Mm. You know, like she gonna tell me. You get what I'm saying? He already won in my life. This my real father. You know, not. You know, I um. So a little bit, my mom, in her situation, you know, is is my oldest brother. Boom, me and him got the same daddy. My second oldest brother, he got. Um, his own dad Then me and my first oldest brother We got the same And then my mom got the rest of her kids By the same man So nigga it ain't like Don't get confused Only three For motherfuckers who It's only three But that's how my family tree is You get what I'm saying With me and my brothers So With, with my brother that That's with my dad That's with my dad You know he got a whole different life. He got a whole different lifestyle, bro. He got everything, you know. But at the end of the day, bro, like me and all my brothers, we love each other. That's just what it is. Yeah. Like, we ain't never going to change each other. Yeah. I ain't going to lie. I kind of lost where I was going to, though. No, it's okay, man. It's What's, what's your question? <sighs> you know, I, I don't even think it's about questions at this point. It's kind of just like hearing your story and hearing how you're developing consciously. And like you said, the intellect. Like, you, mm. you have a better relationship with your dad because... You don't feel like you know everything anymore. And it was probably harder oh, yeah, to have those conversations. I know. Oh, that's where I was at. Me and my dad, we had this relationship. Yeah. Right? So now I could really kick it with my dad and learn some shit from that nigga, though. Because back then, I was like, nigga, I don't care what nobody tell me. Motherfuckers was giving me good advice. And I'm like, I don't care. I know what to do. Yeah. I never had no guidance. So me guiding myself how I was guiding myself was how I was guiding myself. That's just how it went. But now I could take some advice. I was watching this like uh, seminar once and the question, you know, the, the guy running the show was basically asking everybody in the audience, like, how many of you have a good relationship with your dad? Raise your hand. And like out of 100 people, two people rose their hand. And it's very common for people to not have like a stable relationship with their father for some reason. But when you can actually build a relationship with your dad. That's when you kind of leveled up as a, a mature man at that point. Oh, yeah. And actually, bro, I feel like, man, for me, like, bro, I can't, I'm not, bro, I went through, bro, I went through this. So for me, I'm not about to just, I'm not about to just let, really, bro, whatever I go through in life, bro, from this point forward, this is the closest thing to death, bro. Burning in a car for 45 minutes is the closest thing. You feel me? Unless you're getting shot or, you know, like, it's so many other situations. This is a, a, a close scenario to death, I would say. Yes. You know? So, um, for me to be able and still maneuver how I want to, bro, like, hell yeah, bro. Mm. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I have yeah. to I have to serve my purpose, bro. Yes. Like, and just motivate other motherfuckers who, who feel like they can't do what they want to do, bro. Y'all can, bro. Like, yes. shit ain't stopping you. Nick, I accidentally hit my switch. Can you do a, a mic check real fast for me? <coughs> yeah, it's it's uh this is actually a really awesome talk because I feel like people are gonna get motivated no matter what situation they're in. When somebody just like you said, next closest thing to death is losing part of your body, right? Yeah, hell yeah. So, like, what excuses do you have at that point? 
and I know I know right now depression is a huge thing. It's like a whole new concept in the world. Like, oh, you know, support people who are depressed and support people who are this and that. But damn, man, when you go through some ser- serious... I got real life PTSD, bro. Yeah. Like, not even trying to be on no, you know, like, you know, you know how people try to touch on a topic to, you know, but I real life got it, bro. Like, I think about shit that I went through, bro, and I can see it so vividly like it happened yesterday, bro. Yeah. You feel me? Like, so, and I can't, I can't get from that shit, bro. I can't get from, like, you feel me? But at the end of the day, that's what I say, bro. Like, I still got to move, you feel me? Mm. So I just move with comfort. I move with, you know, people that I'm safe with, people that I'm comfortable with, bro. And, bro, shit happens, bro. When you're watching the music scene, uh, explode the way it is in Detroit and everything that's coming with it. And, you know, people are talking about scam rap, and it's 50-50 right now. Like, it's on the rise, but it's all it could also be on the decline to some people's eyes. When you're looking at your impact and what you did in it, what can you say, what can you summarize to talk about your impact with the music? They ain't Detroit? listening to me. If they think it's dead, they ain't listening to me. Mm-hmm. I feel like I got a big impact on it, bro. I feel like um, in certain people, I won't say, but I feel like if I, if I would have not fucked with certain people that was worried about um personal gain on situations you get what i'm saying then i would have been straight cuz i was already good bro i just i just i wasn't i was fucking with certain people but it wasn't like i was following what they was doing you know anybody i was dealing with they was doing their own thing you know like i was the only nigga scamming you know that was going around the niggas I was going around, you get what I'm saying? Niggas, everybody else was doing their own thing. Wasn't nobody scamming that I was going around, you know? So I didn't, I was already my own man. You get what I'm saying? Then I go around somebody who got a mindset of, all right, I want you to be my little nigga. And I'm coming from already being a nigga that's following motherfuckers like, bro, I'm my own man now. Now you want me to follow? No. Yeah, man. So the first time you could bust a left on me on the situation... A nigga going to take it because they don't give a fuck anyways. You get what I'm saying? Especially if I ain't being a yes man, a little nigga. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. If I ain't being what you intended me to be, if I ain't feeling that void you wanted me to feel, then as soon as you able to, you know, like, hell yeah. Like, anybody will. You get what I'm saying? So that's how that's just how that situation went. So I'm like, I'm like cool. But all right, niggas tried to slander my name. At the end of the day, I'm like, bro, I got to keep going. You know, I'm like, I got to keep going. And I don't really feel like that shit is, is detrimental to me now, bro, because, like, bro, come on, bro. Like, bro, it ain't even, it's, I'm still here, bro. Yeah. I'm still here, bro. Like, niggas that's really going upstate on niggas, bro, is dying, bro. Niggas ain't, you feel me? Niggas spending their whole life in that bitch because niggas got them spending their life in that bitch. Ain't letting niggas out this bitch live. Niggas shine like I am. Nigga. And that's a fact, bro. But I like I say, bro, I walk by faith. God wanted me gone, bro. I would have died in that accident, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I would have died right there, bro, burning. I said, I remember getting in it and hopping out of it, bro. Like, nigga, there ain't no lie. You feel me? Like, that's facts, bro. I remember getting in that bitch and hopping out that bitch, bro. Yeah, this story is, uh, this is the first time I've ever sat on this couch, the first moment. This is the first time I legitimately ever sat here and I'm just like, at, I'm almost speechless to your story because the way you express it, the way you explain it, and the way you grew from it is like totally the opposite of what I thought I was getting into with sitting you. Well, I, 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 I didn't you. know, I didn't know what I was going to, this conversation was going to be like, and hearing it as like, I'm just speaking to a wise man, basically, like a very, and very look, wise that's person. That's my goal, bro. You feel me? Like... I- yeah, I was learning how to walk, but I was all t- so I was weak here. I was weak as fuck here, mm. and I was weak as fuck here. Yeah. So, I'm like, bro, I gotta start building here. So every day I'm feeding my bro. I get in my truck, bro. I got motivation speeches, and I got a tape in that motherfucker, bro. No lie. Yeah. No glorification, bro. Just because I I feed my brain now. You get what I'm saying? I feed my seed. Yeah. I don't deteriorate it. I don't just, you feel me, put things in it that's, you know, like, that's going, all right, whatever, me smoking, bro, like, yeah, bro, it's going to make my legs feel better. Doctor prescribed it, bro. I got prescription, bro. <laughs> For real, though. I do. It's fire. No cap. No cap, bro. Yeah. But yeah, though, like, bro, 
Um, I was weak mentally. Is there anything you want to let the people know before we sign off, man? Is there anything you've been holding it in for a while that you need to let out? Man, um, no, I, I really feel like I really feel like I was transparent, bro. I feel like, um, you know, for the platform, bro, everybody just got to lock in. You know, like, like, bro, like, everybody take. What motherfuckers said about me, bro, or or what people said about me, bro, they just literally heard me be the author of my story. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you hearing it from me. You get what I'm saying? So that lets you know if you didn't hear it all here, right, then whenever I'm able to express it wherever else or if I come lock in with you again or we kick it again, then they'll hear it from there. But when you hear it from me, bro, I'm going to be as transparent as I could be and tell you what's going on yes that's truly what i felt from this whole conversation is just transparency so it's like when you hear it from somebody else bro wait till you hear it from me you get what i'm saying to you judge me Mm. on how you feel about me because you can't you can't go off what nobody say bro i don't even treat everybody the same you get what i'm saying because one person to say this about somebody bro they're they not like that with me you get what i'm saying bro yes so it's like I I can't go off what you say about this person until I meet the person, bro. Yeah. And that's all I'm saying. Like, bro, motherfucker gotta understand Goldie. You get what I'm saying, bro? Like, I'm kicking it. I ain't got no problem with kicking it about anything I went through, bro. Like, cause it's life, gang. Yeah. And I think that's where I grew from mentally, though, you know? Yes. Yes. No, this is uh crazy to me. Uh I I I, I can't even put myself in your shoes, man. No pun intended, like... No, you can, though. You <laughs> no, can like, take your shoes, but you can't put nah, yourself yeah. in the feet. For me, man. like, I'm like... You can't put yourself in the feet. I'm, I'm the type of person <laughs> when I... When now hearing what you're saying is, like, now I believe that if something happened to me, maybe I would see past it. But I don't know, man. I always I always think about stuff like that, and I don't know how you did it, but damn, man. Bro, I, the whole world can do be nothing but proud of you for that, bro. Like, that's crazy that you got through this. Bro, shot. Bro, I lost. Bro, not... In the midst of adversity, bro, both of my shorties. Yeah, man. Like, this just didn't happen. And then, like, all right, boom. Then it's like, all right, I got right. Like, bro, I in the midst. Like, everything just quit. Quit. It's okay. Quit. Everything just like, bro, everything happened to you. Just stop. Like, when I say I'm blessed, like, and what God blessed me with and how I carry myself mentally, financially, I'm I'm, I'm blessed. But... In other areas, bro, I was so weak, and it was just like quick, 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 and I could just live off what I got, bro, and I'd be cool. Yeah. But I gotta serve my purpose, bro. Like I said, it's a legacy now, bro. Yeah. You feel me? Like anybody that know my name, bro, like I'm reaching for the legacy, bro. Like I ain't reaching for just somebody knowing me. I ain't reaching for just somebody seeing like, oh, this this person, bro. Like I'm trying to legacy, bro. Yeah. Like, um, the the amount of responsibility factor that it takes. It sounds like you have what it takes to make that happen. A lot of people don't want to take the responsibility role. They're up, they're only in it for themselves. But, um, cash man, self made cash, dude. It was really an honor having you on here, man. I'm definitely gonna have you back for an update uh, as soon as we can. Uh, facts, facts. We're, I'm gonna get you back in here. We're gonna spend more time. I want to really get into more of the story. Uh, go back in time a little bit and spend more time explaining people's your, 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 the continuity continuity of your uh, legacy to this point uh, and for what's going to happen after this. So I appreciate you for being a part of this, man. Um, appreciate it, bro. We're at Parallel Sound Studio. High Low Visuals is shooting these productions. Phil. We're out. Shout out to Phil. Peace. Phil, what's the deal?